Hello, so today we will be modeling a ripple carry adder and we'll also be reviewing module instantiation. And so first of all, you have to create a file in Xilinx and follow the specifications, make sure it's in Verilog, pick the correct packages. And then first you would have to add a source. This time it will be a design source and you can press right here under project manager and this text editor would appear so actually the purpose of this lab was to use the include function so that you can put the file with the design file within another design file but the thing is with this version of xilinx and because this app is on virtual lab, the directories aren't working correctly. So I have to include all three modules on one design source instead of having it on multiple design sources. And so first of all, our text editor should appear. We should have a time scale at the top. This indicates that there is one nanosecond per lap. And on line 22, we should have our half adder. So here we have our inputs A, B, output C, and output S. We have our primitive SOAR gate right here uh, with output S, input A, and B. We have our AND gate, output C, and input A and B. We have our end module. The following should be a full adder. We have inputs A, B, C, in. Output S, C out. We have our wires here. We have this half adder, just calling the other module and mapping the ports. And this is actually mapping ports according to name. We have our OR gate, and this is actually different from here because you would have to put the output first and then the input input. We have our end module. After that, we need our ripple carry for our four bit. We have input C in, we have input A, input B, output S, output C out. These are actually how we declare vectors, also known as buses. So that's zero to three, which is four bits. And we have our wires, C out zero, C out one, C out two. We're calling full adder, this module right here, and we're mapping the ports. And this is actually mapping according, or mapping in order, instead of by name. This is by name, this is order. We have our end module. And from here, we would have to run our schematic. And so this is how the schematic should look like. Probably takes a while to expand all these so we can see the full circuit. We have our fit to zoom right here so you can see the whole circuit. So we have our inputs right here. Actually, let me make it bigger. So I have our inputs right here. This should be our MSB. This should be our LSB. And these are our outputs. We have our instances right here. So calling different modules and mapping their ports. And this would be module instantiation. Now moving on to the test bench. 
So same idea, but this time you're going to add a simulation source instead of a design source. And of course, it also has a time scale. And so here, the simulation source is for your test bench, which would make a timing diagram once you run simulation. So we have our registers right here, C in, A, B, wire S, C out. Right here, it's indicating the bits, 0 to 3, that's 4 bits, it's a vector. We're calling our design source right here. This is our main module. And we are specifying the ports. There's the C in, A, B, S, and C out. We're declaring I, integer I, for the loop. We have our initial, we have our begin. This display, it's just displaying our title. We have our cn equals zero. Our for loop right here, iterating to eight, which would be in hexadecimal. We have our begin. This one right here, or this five, is a delay of one nanosecond, five nanoseconds. So we have our A, B, random, another display, this time displaying the outputs. We have our N for our for loop, N for our initial, and N module. So once we got all that, now we run simulation right here under simulation. Make sure you press on run behavioral simulation and you should get something like this right here. This is actually zoomed in so that you can see zero nanoseconds, two nanoseconds. Before that, it would zoom out to like zero and then 50 nanoseconds and you can't really see the details. So here you can see outputs two, four, six for the for um, action no, 2, 8, 0 for A, and then 4, 1, 9 for B, and then 6, 9 for S. As you can see, this is how the timing diagram should look like. And so today, we learned how to model a ripple carry adder. And we also reviewed module instantiation. Thank you for watching.